Namaskar and greetings from BW Hotelia. Welcome to the inaugural episode of the second season of the much acclaimed BW Hotelia, the GM show. After a very successful inaugural season, we are now back with the high on demand season two. This show helps us to present some of the finest Indian hospitality, general management, leadership, and talent. Ones who will leave this and lead this industry in times to come. We will discuss some very important issues, topics, both current and futuristic, and find a way forward. The format of the series is regional like before, where we cover the north, followed by the west, go to the south, come into the east, go to northeast, and then central. With two shows a week, every Thursday and Friday, 4 to 5 p.m. Indian Standard Time, I shall request you all to block your schedule on these two days of every week for the next few weeks and stay tuned and log in. The show will be relayed live online on all the BW Hotelier and Business World platforms like bwhotelier.com, our social media platforms, be they YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook. Be there, follow us, encourage us to bring you more such gems, and last but not the least, thank you for all your encouragement and support. It's now time to get on with the show with a brief introduction to the show topic and all the speakers. Let us talk Indian hospitality and see how it has progressed over the last three years, how it has unraveled and the road ahead. If one was to foretell crystal ball gazing, Let's now bring in the best speakers for this show. I shall begin with Benita Sharma. She is the area manager North for the luxury hotels and the general manager for the ITC Moria. Welcome, Benita. Uh, next. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Coming, coming in next is Anupam Das Gupta, who is the Vice President and General Manager of the Leela Palace, New Delhi. He needs no introduction. Again, a great player and a very good friend, of course. Good afternoon. Thank you, Burnish, for Thank the wonderful you, introduction. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Uh, Sharad Datta, again, needs no introduction. He may be new to Delhi, but not really new to Delhi. He's moved in from Mumbai uh, recently. He is the general manager for the JW Marriott New Delhi Aero City and Bari. a great hotelier. Bari. Welcome, Sharad. Thank you, Bhumnesh. It's fantastic to be here. Thank you for the introduction. Pleasure. Uh, the youngest, I think so, over here today, Abu Manu Lodha. He's the general manager of the Lodi in New Delhi. Uh, not very old in his job. But yeah, he carries a lot of weight on his shoulders. Abhimanyu. Thank you. And good afternoon, everyone. Thank good you, afternoon. Mr. Kanda. I think you got the age right, sir. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, you've all known of these hoteliers. They least lead some very, very good assets in their segment and for their brands. Um, I shall not take more time. I'll straight away dive into the show and lead in my, with my first question for Benita. Benita, may I begin? Yes, please. All right. Benita, you lead an iconic asset. You know that, right? In the heart of Delhi, and you led it before, through, and now after the lockdown. I hate the word lockdown, but somewhere we have to talk about it. What, in your view, has changed, and what are the learnings? Good afternoon to an audience that inspires me. Good afternoon, Bhuvanesh. At the outset, I'm overwhelmed with this recognition. And on behalf of the team at ITC Hotels, we accept the iconic label with humility and gratitude. Thank you. Coming to your question, yes, there has been a big change. Now, I, I can't say 
that uh, there was all bad, you know, all bad things happened because of the pandemic. No. But there has been a change in both the customer and the manner in which we address the new customer or the new priorities of the customer that have gained significance. The customer today has changed. He is tech savvy and more discerning than he ever was. Wellness, safety, hygiene have gained significance and can in no way be compromised. There are double rooms being occupied with a focus on family, friends, and of course, sustainability. Today's customer seeks value with warm, personalized, but non-intrusive interactions. Guests are seeking experiences that are special and unique. They are more inclined to curated meal experiences with a chef customizing their meals. During the pandemic, new revenue streams in our luxury hotels emerged. For example, takeaway registered phenomenal growths our sleep boutique initiative backed by extensive research towards improving sleep quality was embraced by our discerning guests. And the good news is these initiatives are here to stay. We were fortunate to begin our responsible luxury journey over a decade ago. In fact, much before the pandemic. So it was much easier for us to quickly adapt to the environment and introduce the We Assure program with DNV certification for safety and security of our guests and our associates. Our chefs now continue to take up the challenge and strengthen our green initiatives, replacing international ingredients with local and artisanal alternatives. We set new benchmarks in planet positivity using renewable energy, recycling solid waste, harvesting and conserving water, banishing single-use plastic, basically reducing our carbon footprints to bequeath the next generation with a better tomorrow. Popularizing our Indian heritage cuisines are a part of our responsible luxury ethos with our famous signature cuisines, which you may have heard of, the Bukhara, the Dampuk, kebabs and curries, Royal Vega, Avartan, which is a progressive modern Indian cuisine, South Indian cuisine. The guiding principle, of course, has been caringly selected and mindfully prepared. Our Zesty Morning collection offers superfoods from four breakfasts, bringing together India's forgotten heritage grains, free range, and in-season produce. We also have something called Sattva Meals, which bring out the aesthetic and pure tones underlying traditional vegetarian creations. In room service, we offer a welcome meal that is a balanced combination of fiber, protein, and carbohydrates, carefully portioned for a single diner to provide full nourishment, yet with no waste. Our hotels have risen to exceed customer expectations. I strongly believe that the next new opportunity for hospitality lies in the intersection of digital adoption, optimization of operational efficiencies, sustainability, wellness and safety, powered by our customer-centric, agile and adaptive talent. Of course, digital technology continues to register incremental improvements. During the pandemic, they actually, uh, they were able to register exponential improvements. And thanks to that, we are able to move ahead and we continue in, in that direction because the future lies in us leveraging the power of digital and cut through communication to drive superior customer insights, AI, innovation, deeper consumer engagements, and brand loyalty across multiple distribution networks. Thank you. Brilliant, brilliant. Moria at work and under your charge. Now that takes me to your immediate neighbor in the catchment, Anupam. Anupam, uh, coming back has not been very easy, but looking back at how things have shaped up, 
um, post we opened up. It would be nice to hear from you on how you've taken your business to where it is. We are on a high. The industry is on a high. Uh, ask anybody a year and a half, two ago, what's going to happen? People have their fingers crossed. No more. It's happening and everybody's delivering. If you could share the plan, strategy and execution and to what effect? Okay. Uh, certainly. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Benita. That was a fantastic uh, you know, presentation on what uh, what you and your team have done and uh, everyone at ITC. I've been uh, uh, very fortunate to have worked in that company as well. And I, I know uh, whatever you guys do, you do it with uh, you know a lot of intention and a great heart. So so con congratulations on, on all those initiatives. Really fantastic. Uh, well, as far as our uh, business strategy is concerned, uh, you know, uh, I'll dwell a little bit on uh, the, the time of uh, the lockdown, etc. So, uh, you know, we obviously got into market segments that we never really uh, used to get into, such as sports, uh, movie production. Uh, to a cer certain extent, we started uh, segments such as the law segment, which have been uh, strongholds uh, in, in our certain competitors, uh, office spaces, etc. So we did all of that. And, uh, you know, we successfully tied it over that time. We also... Uh, we also uh, were lucky because being in the geography that we are, we uh, certain market segments never left us, such as the diplomatic segments, uh, the uh, you know the delegations. They continue to come in, uh, even you know despite all the lockdowns and all of that. So we were very lucky that we we were uh, we were always uh, well capitalized uh, as as and and you know our cash flows kept moving. So. That was that was a good thing about uh, our our business. Uh, in terms of food and beverage, we we really cranked up the conversations uh, with competitive pricing, uh, high energy activations uh, such as pop ups, bar takeovers, etc. And we've been at the forefront of things. A uh, lot of collaboration with uh, standalone restaurants and bars helped us uh, get uh, uh, Megu into the uh, Asia's top 50 as well. I feel because of that. And, you know, uh, God willing, with uh, library also, we're inching towards that. Uh, so, you know, case in point, uh, something that we started off during uh, during that time and, you know, something that really culminated, I would say culminated because for every food and beverage guy uh, to work in, you know, under the same roof as Chef Massimo, for example, is 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 really, really something that that is, you know, very heartening and self-fulfilling because the guy is absolutely outstanding. Lives up to every billing that he has, uh, you know, has 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 made, and you know everything that he's known for. So we had we had him here for a couple of high energy, high high you know electric days, uh, as an example of uh, you know pushing the conversation uh, on food and beverage. So uh, and these are things that we we started at that time and we are continuing, and uh, you know it's hold us it's held us in good stead. And it's become a part of our strategy as far as food and beverage is concerned. Post opening up, when we uh, tested the market for price elasticity, certain market segments fell away, uh, as, as we know they knew they would, and certain segments, uh, such as the retail, held up. Uh, so, you know, absolutely, uh, you know, if you, if you look at our, uh, the way the market has performed for us, uh, although we we wish we are uh, you know uh, number one on str all all through the year but uh, i think what is what has happened is uh, fortunately for all of us all of us in this uh, in this forum as well as uh, in the country you know uh, i think we are getting to a place where we are getting the kind of adrs that we deserved for the services we provided for the for the uh, products that we had and uh, and hopefully hopefully this should hold. Uh, so we we that price that price elasticity was extremely important for us, and I think that is a that is a, a strategy that is that is now going to be uh, the norm going forward. Because if you see all the great gateway cities in the world, uh, the the price of a hotel room is uh, is a reflection of the real estate value of of the asset. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, you know, I've managed uh, some iconic hotels uh, in Mumbai, for example, 
right in the you know the, the heart of Mumbai, where real estate prices are equivalent to uh, New York and London, but people struggle to get a two hundred dollar ADR. Uh, so you know, fortunately, we we are we are good on that now. We are uh, we are inching forward towards uh, ADRs that that we feel we all all of us truly deserve. Not just this hotel, but I think uh, my my comset, uh, Vinita, everyone here uh, in this room as well. What certain certain uh, large overarching uh, strategies that we've had uh, as far as the retail segments are concerned, and uh, you know the leisure segments are concerned, are here to stay. Some of them have uh, have already been uh, touched upon by Vinita, but I would say experiential stays are here to stay. Uh, personalization is here to stay. Uh, guests being conscious of doing business with people who really generally want to do good for society is here to stay. Uh, even though we've you know opened up in more ways than one, uh, family vacations are here to stay. You know, pet friendliness is here to stay, and uh, a strong food and beverage program is here to stay. So these are certain things that. Uh, we've embraced in in various ways, and I've seen many of our competitors have embraced them too. Uh, and I, you know, I think I think that's 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 really the going to be the norm for the future. And I think uh, all these things put together, we have a very bright future ahead. Oh yes, uh, absolutely. The future is bright. Uh, you know, I was always very very optimistic uh, uh, when people would uh, you know lower their uh, uh, expectations, I would tell them, listen, you'll be surprised. And surprised they are. Uh, India is placed where not very many countries are lucky to be in. Uh, now, we're not riding on a 1.4 billion at all alone. We have so much more happening. And hospitality hasn't even tested the waters yet. So our best is due. Uh, I shall now come into Sharad. Uh, Sharad, you've handled uh, it all in Mumbai, and now you're here in Delhi. You know both the catchments, right? Uh, just sum up the last three years, the lows and highs, and what are your plans now that we've seen a brilliant recovery, like we've all spoken about? Keeping in mind the brand category, and of course, you're the one who's today representing the Aero City. Aero City is busy like hell, but yeah. business is really really on yeah thank you thank you mr Kanna. um great question and uh, you know both my uh, the people who spoke before benita as well as anupam covered a lot of stuff very uh, apt and extremely spot on uh, covering the expanse of what we need to do as as an industry and as as hotels uh, you asked me about mumbai and and delhi and again anupam alluded to gateway cities and these are the two gateway cities for uh, for india and both of these cities uh, kind of uh, came back much faster than many other cities in uh, in India. Um, if you ask me to sum up the last three three years, I spent uh, those years in Mumbai. Um, you know, if I speak about 2020, tremendous uncertainty, obviously, for everyone. Uh, 21 is what I would call a yo-yo year, right? It's stop, start, hope mixed with caution, going to strife, back to hope. That's the kind of uh, you know way the, the 21 uh, panned out for us. Uh, 22 post uh, April was uh, recovery. The performance graphs for most hotels they rocketed uh, in a positive direction, and that story continues uh, till date. Um, we'll say I was in in Mumbai, and uh, you know we can all talk in hindsight. Uh, whatever strategic planning and innovative approaches we took towards managing our business, all of these were fraught with the risk at all time in in, in those days. Um, also from a performance uh, perspective. Um, we, I think uh, somebody alluded to low-rated business that we've taken uh, all uh, hotels all across. So there was low-rated business, there were logistic handling. Um, a lot of hotels created uh, the bubble culture, right? Uh, that was big during those days. We, as, as a hotel in, in the Western Mumbai, strategically chose to take sport broadcasting business through the year. Uh, and we had teams uh, sitting out of the hotels uh, broadcasting, for example, the, the cricket tours of Australia, uh, Sri Lanka and England. Uh, we, we did the Hero ISL, um, the, the Euro Cup, uh, and we also uh, did uh, the Shark Tank operating from the hotel for, for some time. So businesses 
you know, that, uh, that we've not uh, generally looked at as traditional hotel businesses. That's where um, we kind of looked at our, our strategy and innovative approach. Um, you asked me about lows and highs. I think unequivocally, the impact on people was the low. And I think there's been enough said about it. I don't want to really get into it, but that does remain the lowest point for, for, the, for that time. Um, highs, uh, I speak about Western uh, in, in Mumbai, uh, the hotel delivered uh, very strong financial results through the period, though muted in comparison to, uh, to previous years. And I think uh, one of the highs was that we formed an exceptionally strong people connect with co-workers and guests who were staying with us. Um, uh, and, you know, as I say that, the thought crosses my mind, and I'll say this now with just a little sprinkle of humor, all our guests were extremely well behaved during that period. And that surely must count for, for a high, uh, right? Um, or a positive. <laughs> or positive, right. You spoke about the, the uh, brilliant recovery. Yes, uh, the recovery story is now very clear. 23 will be the best year for a large quantum of hotels uh, across the globe. Um, for me as a leader, the focus shifted very quickly back to how we manage our business in a new world order. Um, with rising demand, uh, Anupam alluded to the rate lift, uh, or now we're finally getting our, our share of what the area should be. Um, then the guest expectations from the brand and the hotel. And I think the brand's expectation from the hotel and the general managers who leave these, these hotels. Um, for me, at uh, JW City, you know, we're a luxury hotel. We've got a very strong brand on the building. Uh, it's my responsibility to enhance this brilliant recovery with a strong business performance, uh, driven, of course, by the hotel's reputation, its ability to deliver quality service, etc. cetera. Um, building on the success of that hotel, the focus, I think, uh, going forward will be on introducing new initiatives. Some of the initiatives we had done in the past, we wanted to bring new ones uh, to the hotel. And these would be aimed to further enhance the luxury guests' experience. Uh, our focus is reinforced on uh, sustainability initiatives, um, giving back to the community through Serves 360, which is Marriott's international uh, global initiative. Um, you know, today business plays an increasingly critical role in taking on our world's most pressing social, environmental, and economic issues. Um, with the size and scale that Marriott has, we have a global responsibility and a very unique opportunity, I think, to be a force for good. Guided by Marriott International's 2025 Sustainability and Social Impact Goals, as well as the UN Sustainable Development Goals, we uh, as a hotel and as a company are committed to creating positive and sustainable impact wherever we do business. Uh, some of the things that we do, and it's been alluded to before, Cake Free Eggs, Clean Air Initiative, uh, in-house water bottling plants, uh, EV charging stations, etc. cetera. Um, one of the key things I think for every brand is go back and focus on the brand culture. You know, from back of the house operations to the everyday lineups that we do with our associates, every aspect of the hotel should really reflect the essence of the brand. It's about executing those brand proof points that truly makes a difference and continue to make a difference. Um, we spoke about creating phenomenal customer experiences. That's an equally crucial aspect that should not be uh, overlooked. No detail is too small as far as our guests are concerned. And as I mentioned earlier, the guest expectation from our hotels post the last three years is also uh, increased. So, you know, by paying attention to little detail, uh, tailoring guest experiences to their preferences, we want to continue to create lasting memories that will help our guests feel valued and keep them uh, coming back. Um, there's also the emphasis on mentoring and nurturing new talent. Uh, I think this is important to strengthen our teams to, uh, to ensure continued excellence in service delivery. Um, we have, uh, through the Marriott Voyager program, uh, reinforced that uh, program and uh, ensuring that we build our leaders for, uh, for the future. Uh, the hotel, we'll leverage our brand and category. Our focus will be to grow our market share, particularly in this highly competitive market of Delhi and CR. Um, we spoke about Aerocity. Aerocity is, like you said, a buzzing uh, segment here. Um, business is, is, is rocking. It's growing in stature as a crucial hub for hospitality and commercial ventures, and it has tremendous potential still. Um, you know, close to, uh, to Aerocity in Dwarka, there's uh, the new Dwarka Convention Center that's uh, slated to open uh, sometime this year, and this will add tremendous, uh, or it will be a big boost for the future. Uh, for Aero City as far as hotels is concerned. So all in all, an extremely good story going forward. 
controls. Yeah, um, it looks good. It looks good. And uh, and I think sooner than later, our people problem is behind us. In fact, it's already behind us. Uh, the talent is back. In fact, new talent is coming in. And, and when you have a general feel-good uh, factor in play, then it only helps us to go along with the high tide. Uh, I shall now come in to you, Abhimanyu. Uh, uh, you know, you and Sharad are the two newest to Delhi. Uh, yes, we are. You're also in the hot seat now in Delhi, and you're in Latin's Delhi, like Benita is, like Anupam is. So we have three of you in Latin's. Uh, tell me, you were running a resort during the pandemic. That's correct. Right. How was it, and what's the learning? Uh, that you think we've had as an industry in the past two or three years, um, how have we changed? Well, say you're, um, you know, I was fortunate to be running a resort. And I say this because now it's common knowledge that uh, resorts and resort destinations were doing exceedingly well during the past two, three years. Um, and I can go on and on talking about all the big, you know, great financial uh, achievements that we had and the record-breaking financial numbers that we had and, and all the good things which followed, um, you know, which happened in resorts and resort destinations of the past couple of years. But I must take a couple of uh, seconds and just like Mr. Datta, touch upon uh, the low point which preceded this economic boom for resorts. And I thought, um, and I'm sure all my fellow panelists, general managers will agree that we had to take some of the toughest human resource decisions uh, of our lives uh, and which preceded this economic boom. Um, salary readjustments, uh, delayed growths and promotions, and certain other decisions which are directly impacting professional careers, uh, which I believe haunts the industry even today. Uh, even today, we are struggling with quality manpower in the industry and not uh, many people want to join the industry. Um, but again, uh, uh, good times and bad times don't both don't last long. And I think uh, you learn more in bad times than you learn in good times. Um, I know Anupam's already mentioned a few things which have continued post um, post the uh, pandemic. So it's to say, but I thought it was a great time for us to look at our business in detail. I think it was a bolt from the blue. Uh, our business, which is all about logic, it's all about creating magic for our guests. Our business was about hugs and handshakes. Uh, and I thought all of that was taken away from us in a jiffy. Um, consequently, if I was to list down, let's say, four or five things which we had to do as a, as a hotel, as a resort, um, as an industry, which have stayed with us even now, um, I thought first things first, we had to get creative. Uh, so suddenly, you know, in... Um, Hotels around the world, you had, uh, let's say, uh, car parks were getting converted into drive-in cinemas. You know, you had rock concerts happening at the poolside of hotels because people wanted to see um, from the comforts of their rooms. So as an industry, I thought we uh, it was it required us to get creative, and we did that very well. Uh, also, it, want, it required us to get nimble-footed. I think it's taught us uh, that the companies and general managers and organizations which were uh, spending lesser time from the inception of an idea to the execution of an idea uh, were the ones who got off the block much faster than the others. And I think that's where you had uh, overnight, you had vegan menus come out because people are more health conscious. You had QR codes in restaurants. Uh, spas decided to expand outdoors because people wanted to be more outdoors than indoors. So uh, another thing that stayed with us is the fact that we've now become nimble footed. And uh, I think we've reduced the time from the inception of an idea to an execution of an idea. Uh, we very quickly realized that uh, with all the HR issues um, around us, multi-skilling and cross-collaboration um, became extremely imp important also because of the erratic demand level. So suddenly you had a workforce um, and which wasn't really equipped to handle the kind of demand that uh, we suddenly were uh, looking at. So multi-skilling and cross-collaboration, and it stays with us even now. Now, uh, it didn't take us too long to realize that everything was moving to the virtual world. Um, if I may, except for the share market, I think IT uh, was on steroids and it continues to be on steroids. 
And I thought um, hotels uh, had to invest in technology to stay relevant. Uh, you know, things like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and virtual meetings, uh, I don't think they were as popular as they are today, let's say a couple of years ago. Uh, so that's something that we, as an industry, have really had to invest in, which is information technology. And um, let's say the fifth point, uh, last but not the least, um, I was fortunate to be working for a resort wherein we consciously decided not to cut down on luxury because we realized very, very soon that the intent to travel was always there. It's just that the uh, the jigsaw puzzle had to, the pieces of the puzzle had to come together. And we realized that the moment uh, the pieces came together and let's say the travel restrictions were lifted, uh, there was a huge boom and huge demand uh, for, for travel and for luxury. So even during um, the time that there was a lockdown, we kept doing something or the other, like marketing to our old guests, because we knew that, uh, you know, People would want to travel to places where they are most comfortable. And it was important to communicate to them all the hygiene sanitization uh, steps that we were taking to re uh, to get their confidence levels back. So those are the few things which I thought we worked, um, worked on and which stay with us even now. That being said, and again, my fellow panelists will agree with me that none of us were taught in business school um, or hotel management school how to handle such a situation, such a bolt from the blue. Um, and I think as we sit down today uh, in our seats, we all realize that if we could handle what we did for two to three years, I think we can handle you know, much more uh, that comes our way in future. I think it's made us better uh, professionals, uh, more uh, confident hoteliers. And um, if I may also take the liberty of saying that uh, for all the human resource um, decisions we had to take, it required um, us to be empathetic. It required us to be humble, uh, required us to display maturity, to show compassion towards our people. And may I dare to say that uh, it's also made us better human beings. So um, confident hoteliers, better human beings, and uh, just a few more things that I spoke about. Uh, that's my takeaway from uh, from the pandemic uh, for the two or three years uh, in the resort. I, I agree with you. And you see, uh, today a whole lot of uh, hospitality management school uh, students are watching, the faculty is watching. Look, this industry uh, offers some of the best career opportunities, right? Don't go by what's happened over the last year or two, right? No. Look at the future. I mean, this hospitality polishes you like nobody else does. This gives you career options like nobody else does. It prepares you for careers, not just in this industry, but outside, right? You, I mean, you look at general managers. I mean, you look at these set today. I mean, these are classic general managers, right? Uh, where do you find people so articulate, so organized, so well-prepared? Right, they are brilliant ambassadors for their brands, for their hotels, and for the industry. So all the impressionable soak in every word that they are saying. They have loads of experience behind them, right? And we all come from middle class families. Ask them. They chose this career over many options that they have. And look at the assets worth hundreds of crores that each one of them heads. So be there. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity and they're great gurus to take away a great message to select a career. Now, I am coming back to you, Benita, all right, for your second question. Uh, understanding the impact of the pandemic, what was your effort on sustainability and how important is it for you at the hotel? We all know. Um, ITC has invested all their resources and energy uh, 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 on sustainability, right? Be it LEED certification or whatever. Your your corporate office is zero carbon and LEED certified. So, Bhunesh, uh, before I come to our uh, responsible like luxury ethos, and there's so much I can talk about it, I just wanted to say that uh, when I listened to everyone, uh, I must say that we slept very well during the pandemic. Not a single job was lost. That's nobody, 
lost salary without voluntarily giving some of it. If they volunteered, we accepted it. Otherwise, not one person lost a job. So that is, you know, when I listen to people, I must say that I'm really humbled with the company I work for, and I'm extremely grateful for all that they did for us and our teams so that we had a good night's sleep. We felt very safe. But there was no insecurity as far as employment goes. Now to answer your question, I would like to mention that our parent company used to be in tobacco. Uh, it sustained its AA rating by MSCI ESG, which is the highest amongst global tobacco companies. Also, we were also included in the Dow Jones Sustainability Emerging Markets Index. It is a matter of immense satisfaction that ITC Hotel sustainability practices continue to receive global recognition. It began with the first Platinum LEAF certified hotel, like the ITC Moria, went on to all our uh, luxury collection hotels, some of our welcome hotels. We are now we also have registered LEED zero carbon certified hotels and finally LEED certified water positive hotels. Hotels are at the crossroads of a redefined future. Multidimensional learnings from the pandemic days include purposeful innovations as all my colleagues have spoken about, in-service products, exponential digital technology, the technological advancements as I said, with ad adoption of the same, unprecedented agility with new and disruptive offers in the market. However, amongst this, the stark sustainability challenges became an existential threat. Accentuated with the background of the pandemic, the past year has experienced unprecedented climate conditions. As Bhuvanesh, you spoke about, you, you found it difficult coming into, uh, you know, coming into Delhi. The rains have thrown, in the north, have thrown life out of gear. Despite, I, I just had the food and beverage manager walk in. Uh, he's been struggling from 8 o'clock in the morning to get to one road which will lead him to ITC Moria. Despite all the commitments the world is, has made, all the countries of the world have made, it is the world is likely to experience a 2 degree centigrade rise in temperature by the middle of the century, which may prove to be catastrophic for all living <coughs> on our planet. Apart from the following progressive legislation for the, uh, of the, in, for the uh, you know, there'll be progressive legislation by the government for the environment, it will be imperative for our hotels to develop technology solutions like carbon capture utilization and storage. In the Global Climate Risk Index 2021, India has emerged as the seventh most climate vulnerable hotel in the world, a uh, vulnerable country in the world. However, there is hope as India has emerged as a global leader in the actions that they've taken for, the, for climate change. One of the few G20 nations to achieve the commitments made at the Paris Convention. The need of the hour for all of us in hospitality will be to develop, process, and adopt products that innovatively integrate environmental stewardship and employment generation as a core outcome. We need not, we, we need to not only be agile, customer-centric, innovative, uh, but also purpose-driven, uh, and I'm going to use the term responsibly competitive. Continue our focus on decarbonization with increased use of renewable energy. We are, in our hotels, we, we boast of being all our hotels are have renewable energy up to 44%. Ensuring water security, adoption of nature-based solutions, and creating an effective circular economy for recycling solid waste. So ITC boasts of having a 99% recycling of solid waste. 99% of their solid waste is recycled. At our hotels, we are guided with continuously evolving comprehensive sustainable policies, as I've said. We work with stakeholders, greening the supply chain, identifying sustainability 
challenges to progressively source alternatives to mitigate risk or the impact on the economy uh, on the environment. We will continue to work on construction of our green buildings, our green practices, our green products, greening logistics, optimizing distance to market. A lot of our hotels have moved from, uh, you know, have this initiative of farm to plate. And each day, this race gets better and better to better the percentage use of renewable energy. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, my, yes. Uh... I, I I mean, I've just come back from the Maldives and I know a thing or two about uh, climate change and what impact it can have on a whole nation. Right? So, I mean, you look at Venice, they, they are trying to pump up the entire nation, I mean, the entire city by 30 centimeters over the next 10 years. Wow. Right? So what they're trying to do is they're pumping up seawater into the foundations of the entire city to try and lift it up. It, it's going to cost them billions of dollars, but just lifting it by 10 centimeters. Wow. You know, how much is 10 centimeters? Yeah. You know, Mr. Khanna, may I just uh, interject here? And I was listening with great intent to what Benita was saying, and it's amazing to hear um, all the brilliant things that's been done. Uh, but just as an industry, um, I don't think we do enough for uh, sustainability. I mean, we are hotels around the world are the highest consumers of water and electricity per square uh, per square feet. Um, I mean, and sustainability is not only about the destination, right? It is also about the people around the destination. I mean, our uh, do we do enough for the for the people around our destination for the art, culture, folklore? Do we do enough as an industry? Um, our um, you know, you look at our hill stations, our dump yard. You know, I mean, our there's so much garbage all over our hill stations. We kept hearing about uh, Cape Town running out of water. It's, it's come home. Shimla's running out of water. Uh, so just as an industry, um, you know, and I don't know if we have invested enough in automation towards energy saving. Uh, is travel If travel and tourism does not cut carbon emissions by at least 60%, I don't think as an industry we're doing enough towards our sustainability. And, um, I, I agree with you, Abhimanyu, but uh, having said that, uh, our, our next generation is extremely conscious, and I know general managers and, and, and operating companies, they become extremely conscious. Yes, it hasn't taken on a, a heavy-duty push, but sooner than later it will. For instance, when I check into a five-star hotel, my first instruction at the reception and to housekeeping is do not change my linen till I don't check out. Yeah. Right? I don't. I try and avoid taking any paper napkin or tissue or use unnecessary linen. Right? And the so, success yeah. of most businesses around the world uh, will be judged on your impact on uh, on, on the world, and uh, our business is going to be no different. So already investors are asking you questions on uh, on environment, social impact, governance, now uh, before they sign up with you. So uh, hopefully things will get better. Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm coming to you, Anupam. Uh, you know, we've spoken in the last five uh, questions that I've put. We've heard a lot about people, right, about talent. Tell me, people and talent have been a challenge given what has happened. Uh, what has been your plan and strategy to overcome this hurdle and deliver a great ex experience and, of course, results, be it financial, qualitative, quantitative? Uh, okay, so, you know, uh, as luck would have it, the company changed hands just uh, before COVID happened. And... Um, you know, we moved from one ownership to the other. Uh, what eventually happened was uh, similar to what uh, Benita also said. Uh, you know, we fortunately, you know, and again, saying it with the greatest humility, uh, knowing uh, what was happening all around us, uh, you know, it makes you all the more, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, touched and humbled by, you know, your circumstances. But not one, not one person got laid off. Uh, full salaries were paid, increments were given, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, 
so that uh, that was the starting point, right? So uh, that happened, and then then came uh, you know certain uh, certain stuff such as trust, openness, and candor, which which I think uh, all of us try and imbibe into our leadership, and you know, uh, and it flows downwards. So uh, I think uh, you know one was the you know the basic the Maslow's needs uh, if I were to uh, you know paraphrase on that uh, and then you have uh, you know all these other other things that we do as leaders every day leading by example etc so th those are things which bring build the foundation for any great organization for any great hotel I think uh, you know if 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 one takes care of that. Uh, everything else gets taken care of and your business gets taken care of your uh, nps gets taken care of your quality scores everything everything falls into place so lucky to have had that backing lucky to have had a great uh, operating team and leadership team that imbibed uh, all the trust openness and candor that i uh, that i alluded to uh, so that was you know the you sort of the housekeeping bits uh, out of the window uh, other than that, uh, we took in a lot of initiatives uh, to keep people motivated and, uh, you know, push through what is called the Leela University, uh, you know, uh, in terms of accelerated development. We, we started with something called the LEAD program where we identified uh, high potential employees, uh, uh, managers who are uh, managers of tomorrow. Uh, gen general managers of tomorrow, senior leadership of tomorrow, put them through uh, management development programs uh, in, uh, you know, partnership with ICE, uh, which is also, uh, you know, the uh, the hospitality school, which is partnering us for our uh, leadership development program, which which also uh, started at this time, because we we needed obviously we needed, uh, you know, a, a runway uh, of talent uh, to be developed for all the growth opportunities that are coming their way. For the for the leaders of the future, so the LLDP, the lead were examples of certain talent development that we've done, and mentoring people. Uh, people were given mentors across different hotels. Different general managers were mentoring different high uh, potential employees, uh, and you know I think I think all the all of these have have really really held us in good stead. We also started what is called the Palace Services Program, which was a reinvigorated Butler Service Program. And uh, uh, you know that was something that we very quickly realized uh, was a was a great uh, you know uh, not just as a sub brand for for our company but something that really really aided us in our efforts to personalize stays. Uh, again, uh, you know it, it became it segued into the leadership development as well because uh, somebody who is uh, in in the palace services program having served successfully over a certain period of time would be eligible for the uh, to get into the leadership development program so all of these things were done keeping in mind that we needed to develop talent um, uh, and you know and and to build that to build that runway for talent for talent uh, besides this uh, we've actively uh, looked at how we could improve our diversity uh, um, many of our hotels including mine uh, have uh, a lot of lot of uh, team members and colleagues who are differently abled, uh, you know, in areas where, uh, you know, that, you know, they can really make a difference. So, for example, as, as, as a matter of great pride, my entire minibar team is, uh, it comes from a school, uh, you know, a deaf and dumb school. They, wow. you know, that's, it's amazing. amazing. And, you know, the kind of work they do, they don't really have to thank you for the applause. Uh, you know, it's it's really it's it's really very heartwarming, and you know we have zero attrition in that, and people love them. You know, they they wear these big badges, which which tells people that you know they're not able to interact in the normal way. So, just as an example of what we've adopted, and many other many of our other sister hotels, sister uh, sister uh, hotels in our company have adopted the same. Uh, so we are also doing a lot of work on uh, gender diversity. And developing uh, uh, leadership amongst uh, ladies, uh, and that is very uh, that is a conscious effort. Uh, there's a conscious effort towards that. We are replacing 
uh, certain talents, uh, you know, where attrition, natural attrition has taken place with, uh, with uh, leadership, uh, you know, lady leadership. Uh, and I think, I think that is really a, another thing and another great area of, of, of focus for us. So all in all, I think, uh, uh, you know, we've become, in many ways, we're becoming, uh, you know, an employer of choice. Uh, of course, it helps that, you know, you know, we, for example, accolades such as, uh, you know, being in the top three brands in the world, luxury hotel brands in the world, all these accolades really, really help as well, because for, for a lot of people, it's aspirational to, to want to work in a place uh, that would offer them those kind of career opportunities to do so. So I think from a people perspective, uh, the basics are very, very important. Uh, the basics of leadership, and I, I, you know, I'm a great believer in level five leadership. That is uh, cited by Jim Collins in his famous "Good to Great," and I, you know, I keep it very, very close to my heart, and I, and I try and, uh, uh, you know, walk the talk on it. Uh, of course, uh, you know, it's a long way to go on that, but uh, God willing, someday. Uh, but that's all as far as uh, you know, people are concerned. You know, uh, you you've spoken about uh, two or three things which are extremely important for me, right? Diversity, inclusivity, right, and and bringing in the marginalized and less fortunate, right. So what is normal for them, we consider it as not normal, right? Their normal state is that they need to go sign language, right? So so great step forward. Tell me. If I was to ask you, how are your takings happening from hospitality management schools? Have you personally been there? Have you presented a case for the industry, your brand, your hotel? I have. Uh, in fact, all the final interviews that happen uh, uh, happen uh, with the general manager, and I'm I'm also <coughs> at the forefront of it. Uh, we also have been assigned various zones. Uh, to recruit from, so uh, we are responsible for recruiting people uh, for our zones, for our uh, sister hotels, and uh, so you know it is uh, in a in a certain way it has been tough. I must I must tell you because uh, people coming into the industry, uh, the number of people, the percentage of people opting for the industry, uh, you know it it has it is I think lower than much lower than what it was during our times much lower than what it was even five to seven years ago. I think, uh, uh, you, you know, people were generally scared after uh, all the layoffs that happened during COVID. Uh, and I think if certain hotels or companies did not handle it in a particularly humane way, uh, you know, a lot of, of course, you know, there are team members who understood. I've even come across people who, who've been laid off, but, you know, they had a great boss who explained to them exactly what happened. They had a great hotel uh, and a great management that explained to them exactly what's happening, you know, keeping them informed, uh, you know, being open uh, and honest about and candid about what was happening. So I think that that was very important because even if you do have to, you know, take that extreme step, the way it is done is very important. I think Abhiman, you touched upon it. Uh, you know, it's, it, it, it is very, very important that it is done in the right way. Uh, you know, if ever it has to be done, and it's it, you know, it's it's obviously not not the best thing to be done, but if at all it has to be done. So, uh, coming back to answer your question, uh, tough times ahead for our industry as far as uh, getting talent con uh, that's concerned from the hotel schools. Uh, it is cyclical in a way. I feel uh, we will uh, we will eventually come back. Uh, maybe not to the extent that we have been used to, but there are certain changes that we have to make uh, in our salary structures, in the way we uh, address work-life balance, in the way we address uh, how we deal with the generation. Because you know they they are not uh, they are not any different from what you and I were. It's just that the times that they've grown up with are so different, right? They've grown up in a digital age, um, so obviously. Uh, you know, they don't like to be thwarted with uh, bureaucracy. They don't want to be thwarted with, uh, you know, time-wasting tactics, etc. They uh, they also are a generation that are relatively, um, you know, lucky 
to have uh, got a lot of things that we were not used to, right? Not just technology. I mean, we uh, you spoke about Bhuvanesh, uh, all of us being from middle class families. Uh, well, there are middle class families from where these kids are coming as well. But the cer certain, privileges that, certain privileges that they are used to are not what we were used to, right? Mm -hmm. So certain things that we took for uh, we did not take for granted are being taken for granted. So it's a question of perspective. And we as leaders have to change our perspective and, you know, lead, uh, uh, you know, like uh, certain certain things which are, like I say, housekeeping standards, they have to be maintained, like trust, candor, openness, they have to be done. But there are also different ways of dealing with the generation. And I think we have to change rather than expecting them to change. Excellent. Thanks, Anupam. I'm coming to you, Sharad rushed for time now. Sharad, tell me, uh, you know, where you are, the asset that you hit. That's the big one for banquets, mice, right? And the big fat Indian wedding, right? Um, they're all important segments. But were the last of the block um, when it started. Um, we started with small wedding packs. I remember 20 people are married, 25 <laughs> Tell me, now weddings are back, banquets are back, mice is back. How did you how did you wade your way by uh, your way past to stay on top of the situation? Were you then and now on top of the game? And looking ahead, how does it look? Thanks, uh, Bumesh. You know, this question uh, is great, but uh, listening to the last question and the, the interaction around that, there's so much of passion that we all have around our people. And Anupam, uh, I think, echoed that. He spoke from the heart, so great. You know, oh, yeah. We can speak for hours on that topic. It is just so engaging and fantastic. This actually may be very insipid after that, but I'll do my best to, to <laughs> do it justice. But, <laughs> you're right, you know, restrictions on gatherings at that time meant that... Uh, this was the last segment of the block, uh, but it's caught up quickly, I think, and it's it's kept pace. Um, going back, how did we adapt? I think across the board, adapting to uh, whatever trend there was, I think the key was to quickly adjust our offerings uh, and cater to those small weddings that you spoke about, the 20 uh, uh, people wedding, six weddings happening at one time, if you were allowed to. I think there was some rule that says you can't have more than one wedding also at that time. And it's fantastic to see that people still wanted to get married in those uh, in those times, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, what what helped at that time uh, was, uh, you know, we had to adjust our offerings to cater to these small wedding packages within our banquet facilities and also leveraging our strong market presence and relationships. Everybody wanted to do business, right? So everybody was looking for opportunities to uh, to create those those business opportunities. Um, and combine this with, uh, you know, from Marriott perspective, we had a, a great initiative called Commitment to Clean. That was a promise uh, in terms of hygiene and safety. And this allowed us really to tap into this segment early on. On and, and establish our, uh, our presence. Um, at uh, JW uh, Aero City, uh, you know, versatile event spaces, as you mentioned, it's, uh, it's a large ship with, uh, with fantastic um, banquet facilities. We've got a grand crystal ballroom. Uh, we can take up to 1,500 guests now. And of course, like most ballrooms can be divided into smaller rooms uh, to cater to different uh, events. Uh, looking ahead, the future, as in other segments, looks extremely uh, promising. For our hotel, you know, with our uh, well-equipped uh, ballroom, as I mentioned, our versatile event studios, we are very well positioned to meet this growing demand from banquets, mice, weddings, etc. Um, our flexibility in our uh, space uh, that ensures that we can cater to various events, large conferences to intimate gatherings, uh, and we could do that back then and now, uh, now also, right? Um, uh, we're known for exceptional service and creating memorable experiences, and obviously we'll we'll continue to do that at this hotel, and we will continue to remain as one of the top choices for hosting meetings and events in the city, and definitely at uh, at Yellow City. And uh, you know, as travel remains on this very strong upward curve, uh, we know that a large portion of it has come through the luxury group travel, and all of us, our general managers here on this call today, are representing luxury hotels, and I think that's an important uh, play in this in this whole piece. We've seen a stellar growth in this uh, segment in demand, and this continues to uh, to grow. And I think it's also fueled by continuous opening of now. The entire world is almost open, right? And numbers are very very encouraging. 
Uh, there's a study that said that the global mice market is expected to reach uh, somewhere close to USD 1.6 trillion by 2030. And that's an exponential jump over today. And uh, if, if you look at it from a CGI perspective, it's almost 27.5%. And not only that, the year 22, Asia Pacific was the largest contributor to the mice industry. And when you consider that India was one of the fastest in APAC to recover, imagine the future potential. Fabulous. You know, I, I referred earlier to the convention center uh, at, at Dwarka. This has far-reaching positives for Aero City hotels and other hotels. The, the kind of uh, space uh, there is, the kind of uh, large uh, conventions that will be driven into the city is going to be a phenomenal uh, future for, for mice uh, uh, in, in this part. Um, we've also heard that uh, Ministry of Tourism, the, they're planning a new digital campaign to boost mice tourism in, in India in a big way. Um, they've also announced a dedicated fund for promoting the industry. I think that's fantastic news for, for the industry and that will really help us uh, to garner uh, you know, inbound business coming in. And I also think there are trends uh, slash focus areas that will redefine the event and my space as we go forward. Um, one thing that we spoke about, all of us, we spoke about sustainability. Uh, you know, sustainability and ESG policy, policies have never been more important than they are today. Um, even event planners and clients are focusing on delivering carbon neutral or even zero carbon events. Um, uh, I think uh, someone uh, alluded to the fact that millennials and Gen, uh, Gen Zs are extremely concerned about global sustainability today um, and also the environment. Uh, this is an area which I think will grow significantly as they take on even more professional prominence and business uh, decision-making responsibility. Um, Bleasure is another uh, piece that is uh, going to grow. I think employers are increasingly conscious that business travel also enables employees not only to advance their careers, but also to explore the world. So I think that's uh, that's another piece that will come in. Wellness, we've all known, has been a big uh, piece for some time and will continue to play a key factor for luxury group uh, travel and in line with the growth in wellness uh, tourism. Um, there's also something that, uh, that I've heard recently called geo-cloning. Uh, it may sound futuristic, but it's a strategy that's being investigated by organizers and exhibitors to connect with audiences locally as well as internationally. And the um, idea behind that is to replicate well-known exhibition and even brands in different parts of the world, uh, thereby contributing to industry growth and really driving this segment uh, forward. Um, putting it all together, I think the, the future of uh, this segment is extremely robust uh, and fund will grow. And I think it will also require that we move from the cookie cutter operation that has happened in the past and embrace the critical elements in today's world of uh, sustainability, uh, AI, chatbots, cloud systems. And I think there is merit in looking at how we can or we should adapt to this juxtaposition of human service for our luxury guests, especially in this uh, segment. So, you know, a great future for mice, great uh, future for hotels, uh, to all listening in, this is, uh, I think, in a sense, back with a bang as a preferred profession to choose. Um, Absolutely. So yeah. and, and you guys are great ambassadors. Now I'm coming to the last but not the least question. And that goes to you, Abhimanyu. Uh, categorization of an asset class from luxury to economy is also man-made, uh, right? I want you to be brief. We are over time. Uh, the guest makes decision basis what they look at, for example, price, location, facilities, f and and yes, relationships. Uh, and then they decide. Uh, how would you manage this and make it sure and predictable to clinch? I want to say a question in one line. I think luxury is here to stay. It's going nowhere. You see, traditionally, the three elements of any luxury business have basically been you generate demand, you deliver the experience and you maintain the economics short term and long term. But another very important aspect which has come up, a new element which has developed in the past three to four years, I would say, is it's always been part of the human DNA um, and that is aspiration. You see, traditionally, luxury was all about the haves, not the have-nots. It's about how rich you are, the rich class, if you could afford something. But it's all evolved now. You see, the, the people driving luxury growth in the world right now are the Zen Zs, the millennials, and the Henrys. I mean, Henrys, of course, are the high earners who are not rich yet. And we are sitting in a country where the 65% of the population is under the age of 35. So I think we are very well placed 
to start with. Also, a significant number of Indians are um, becoming aspirational consumers of luxury products, uh, owing to their high disposable incomes. If you look at certain statistics, I'll just take uh, a couple of minutes more. Um, this is supposed to be India's decade. Um, in the next 10 years, the luxury business in India is expected to grow almost 3.5 times of what it is right now. And in the next three years, the number of millionaires in India is expected to grow by 105%. Now, if this, these numbers are anything to go by, uh, I think India is very, very well placed um, at, to lead the luxury market. And what is luxury? Luxury is all about mm -hmm. uh, you know, delivering error-free service. At least in our business, it's about error-free service first time, every time. It's about being discreet, about delightful, about spoiling the end user. And uh, while economy is all about being transactional, mm -hmm. luxury is here to say, stay. It's experiential, and now it's even aspirational. Um, so I think we are very well placed in the luxury market. It's going nowhere. We just need to ensure we don't cut down on luxury. Um, otherwise, we have a, I think India as such is very, very well placed. And no wonder you have international brands making a beeline for India, may be it fashion or even hotels. So um, I hope I've, I've oh, answered yeah, your question. Time. But let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this here, you know, uh, with all honesty at my command, the purpose of sh shows like the BW Delhi at GM show, you know, which is going to be recorded and it's going to be replayed, happens when uh, the show, right? They all keep coming. They keep coming to watch. Now, we are presenting a damn good case for the industry. What does the future hold for us? Um, what does it hold for our industry, for the country, and for the careers of the ones who are watching? And you guys have presented such a damn good case for yourself. Okay, Salman Khan not the one who drives over uh, pavements, my colleague over here. So he's presented our next show, which is going to be tomorrow, same time, 4 p.m. Salman, get this slide back. Uh, so this show is about G20. You know, G20 is a brilliant opportunity to showcase our country, our capabilities, and our industry. So we'll have some of the finest GMs. I'm not going to talk about their names. We all know them. Be it Shrikant, Jaydeep, Nayan, uh, Rishi, Tarun, or Vineet, right? So they're all going to discuss this. Coming back to closing this show, uh, you know, you guys are worthy ambassadors for the industry. You presented a damn good case. Um, you know, between you all sitting over here, I think we should have about 150 years of experience, right? Um, and 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 I think. It is extremely important for us to do these shows, for us to present our views, so that all the impressionable and the ones who are looking for opportunities know who are the ones who are leading the pack today. And sooner than later, you guys are going to see it charge, right? So it's, it, it's imperative and it's um, for us to, 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 to handhold. And Anupam, you've uh, you spoken about inclusion. You've spoken about uh, gender uh, equality, diversity. Uh, Pinita has spoken about sustain. Like you all have spoken about sustainability. Uh, Abhiman, you presented a case for luxury, right? Sharad spoke about how Dwarka is a great opportunity, and weddings are not going anywhere. Uh, mice is coming back in a big way. So all in all, touch wood, fingers crossed, things are looking sharp, looking good. We should take this now to the next level and keep looking forward for BW Hotelier's GM show. There are going to be episodes every Thursday and Friday, 4 to 5 p.m. Be there, lock in. And thank you, Benita. I'll start with Benita. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, Anupam, thank you, my brother. Thank you for okay. having us. Thank you, Sharad. And last but not the least, Abhimanyu. I've, I've had an absolute blast over here. Thank, thank you, Bhupan. Thank, thank, thank you for having us. Thank you, guys.